the vocal section in here that has to do with the basically what amounts to the first pulp mo movement. So we're used to talking about kind of commercial genre fiction in, in, in the guise of the, the pulp fictions of the, the 1950s, which were mostly sci-fi, but also mysteries um, and then fantasy as well. And um, all of those, which I call the commercial genre fictions. So romance, science fiction, fantasy, suspense, thrillers, mystery, crime thrillers, horror, um, adventure stories, all of these the genres that people love, that people tend to really read for entertainment, um, that have in each in their own way had hard fought battles for respectability, for lack of another word, for recognition in general from the literary community. So those genres all kind of have their origin in the gothics, which were pre-Victorian, but really had a heyday in the Victorian era. And that has to do with the rise of industrialization and the fact that um, literacy in women rose. And so women started reading more, they had more leisure time to do so, especially in the middle classes. And then they started to be catered to by other female authors. And so you had the rise of uh, basically um, the yellowbacks and the penny dreadfuls, which were sort of at the time regarded as sensationalist entertainment for, you know, for the lower orders, you know, for the, for the, female, for the female gaze essentially. And very, very frowned upon and disregarded, uh, partly because like the pulps, which is where the name pulp comes from, they were printed on cheaper materials using this new fangled high production printing presses that had also been invented or were, were being perfected as part of industrialization. And so you get an entire genre that essentially is written for and by and presented to women, which at the time were very critically dismissed by the male critics at the time um, as suitable only to the ladies um, and therefore unimportant. And that, that association, sort of guilty by association, has colored all of the genres that come from those, which is basically commercial genre fiction as we have it today, because you know everything kind of owes a little bit of its core archetypes and tropes in particular to, to the gothics. And that's just a battle that we still fight on many, many levels. And I feel like some genres are kind of getting a little bit more respectability as they climb their way up. Others like romance are still pretty disregarded. Um, and that to a certain extent kind of all comes from this whole thing that happened during the Victorian era. Yeah, I always remember when I went to a wedding and as part of an experiment, instead of telling someone I wrote something really deep and meaningful, I introduced it as celebrity romance and he immediately laughed at this guy I was talking to. This was someone who'd never finished anything and at this point I'd published five books, but he laughed at me and he stopped laughing when I told him that I had a lot of readers who actually cared about my characters and I was making money from what I was doing. Because, you know, this was someone who couldn't even finish their work in progress laughing at me for writing about people falling in love, which is it's, literally what everyone wants. Yeah. And like, and it's a really interesting thing to sort of chart back and be like, well, Shakespeare mostly writes about people falling in love. And Jane Austen basically wrote the six main, six of the main romance tropes and it's just like after a very long time they finally or dickens writes about people falling in and out of love and it just takes a very long time even the great like any bullish roman has like a love thread in it right and just after a very long time finally they become acceptable somehow um but yeah and before anybody out there is thinking yes but romances are badly written or blah 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 blah, blah i defy you like there every genre has badly written books in it like that's not that's not a reason to dismiss an entire genre 100 um, percent. like i don't get this whole like dismissing an entire genre or like when people say all oh, indie books are badly written it's so like reductive because have you read every single book in that genre? Have you read exactly. every single author? Like... Well, and that's but that's another reason to kind of know that like what you're responding to as a reader or a writer for that matter, but what you're responding to as a reader most of the time is not necessarily how the book is written. I mean, it it might be if you're somebody who specifically reads for language and linguistic manipulation, if you're particularly into what I would call the literary fic or the literati to a certain extent. Um, but if you're somebody who reads for entertainment primarily, then what you're responding to is how that author fits into the genre expectations that you have, which tropes and archetypes you enjoy. Because if you're reading commercial genre fiction, they all have tropes and archetypes. It's not just romance that's full of tropes. I know it's a dirty word. 
Um, and so, yeah, I mean, I think it behooves you to try to understand why you like a thing, especially if you're going to write that thing. <laughs> um, but, but also like why you're dismissive of certain things. Like one of the things that made me write this book is what I realize is I really don't like the hero's journey as a reader. Like, I just don't like some of its messaging. I don't like the way they, these books often end, which is usually with pathos and sort of sadness or what I would call ambiguous endings. So, you know, I gravitate to the heroine's journey and I was like, well, why is that? What is it I'm getting from these books? What is it that readers want from these books? And then you know, that kind of also sparked me trying to investigate it a little bit more. Um, but yeah, it, I mean, this conversation, if you admit to writing romance, uh, and I dare you, even if you don't write romance, to try like mustering up the courage, because it'll take a lot of courage to try doing it at like a cocktail party or whatever. Yeah, the flack you still get from Lehman is pretty, is pretty severe. Out there. It's funny though, because I do almost feel like people take me more seriously as an author now when I say I write ghost stories. And that's mm. horrible. And just saying ghost stories compared to fantasy, even people receive it differently, mm. even though they're basically the same. Yeah. And, and honestly, what you can do if, if you are scared of, of the seriousness of this, like of being taken seriously or whatever, um, which is also fair, you know, like owning, owning your own thing is, is difficult many times is to come up with the minor, the more subgenre that you write um, <laughs> that you can then specify so that people are more likely to be confused than dismissive. Um, and then you can kind of trot out, oh, there's romantic elements like later on, because, you know, what book in the history of books doesn't have at least some romantic elements? 